Welcome back to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gisela Kay, and today I want to give you a case update of everything we know so far in the missing persons case of 16-year-old Kylie Rodney. We're going to go over the timeline and all the important details that you need to know in case you missed out on all these hours worth of live streams and press conferences. There's been a lot of information coming out every single day. Most of us really only heard about this case on Monday, um, and I covered it as a missing persons case on Monday, and since then, every single day, there's been up updates almost hour by hour so let's just compact that for you guys so that you can just catch up and then as more information comes out you'll know exactly where we're at so let's just look at the timeline okay I've also got some notes um, I just want to go back to Thursday August 4th before this timeline over here because on Thursday August 4th according to one of Kylie's friends Kate Kuno Kylie and Kate spent the day in Reno now, in Reno, during that week, was this event called Hot August Nights. So, it's unclear whether Kylie and Kate actually went to that event on Thursday. It seems like they just hung out in Reno for the day. Then, on Friday, Kate says that her and Kylie were at home making creme brulee and just hanging out. The day of the party, I hung out with her. We made creme brulee. She was, I mean, everything was normal. I don't think she ran away or I mean, I would have noticed if something was slightly off. At some point during the day, Kylie had also met up with Mags. That's one of her best friends, according to what we know so far. Magdalene Larson. You may have seen her on some of the interviews we shared. If you didn't, don't worry. I will put some pictures up for you so that you guys can see, you know, who's who in this case. She came with her best friend Mags, uh, Mags Larson. Magdalene, sorry, is her first name. Yeah, um, that's okay. Yeah, and so she came with her, drove in with her, and then um, Mags ended up leaving about 10 minutes into the party with her boyfriend, Ross, Mags's boyfriend, and um, told Kylie goodbye and everything, and they were never planning on, like, leaving together or staying together at the party. They just went to the party together because they were hanging out earlier in the day. I need her to come home, and I need us to find her. So Kylie and Mags were apparently hanging out for a bit and then there's this surveillance footage that was released of Kylie at 6.08 p.m. on Friday, August 5th. And that was from a local store in Truckee and obviously hours before the party. Now apparently Kylie and Mags arrived at the party together and they arrived around 10 p.m. That's from all accounts we have so far, which also mostly comes from Sammy Smith which is also a friend of Kylie. However, it seems to be that she wasn't as close a friend of Kylie's as she may want to imply. Let's put it like that. We were both at the party together. We were going around together. We were like a little pair. Everybody kind of saw us together. So, so she's not, not following her on social media. That would be a clue as well. So the thing is, Kylie was last seen August 5th at a party at Prosser Family Campground near Truckee. Kylie is 16 years old. This party was meant to be for seniors, but Sammy said all grades were invited and it was supposed to be a farewell party for the seniors so that, you know, because they were graduating from high school and going off to college. And they are all very soon now, within the next week or two, going off to college. But this party, word got out about it. They say it's word of mouth, but Sammy also talked about handing out flyers and kind of promoting the event. I haven't seen ev any evidence of it on social media, but this party attracted people from way outside of Truckee. I mean, they're talking from Reno, from San Francisco, from all over the place, and at least 300 people showed up in the woods at night, and this party became completely it got completely out of, out of hand. It was a drug fueled party. There were older guys present, apparently, that were, you know, about age 28 or so. Some reports even of a 40 year old man walking around asking girls if he can help drive them home, be their designated driver. So that's a huge red flag as well. So the thing is, Sammy arrived at this party around 9 p.m. She says the party blew up between 10 and 10.30. Now, Kylie arrived with Mags at this party at approximately 10 p.m. with her friend Magdalene Larson. Now, Mags left within 10 minutes of arriving. She felt very uncomfortable. She said that within the first 10 minutes of arriving, at least five guys approached her and tried to get her to do as many bong rips as possible in that time. So this is where everybody's hanging out. Kylie and I were meeting up. 
right here a lot. Local young people call this open area near the Prosser family campground the sanctuary. It's a common place for parties. Sammy says she was here with Kylie Friday night, along with tons of other high school and college kids from the Bay Area all the way to Nevada. Right now our estimate is about 200 to 250, maybe more. What she and Kylie's family want to know is how no one saw her leave in her silver Honda CRV. Her car is still missing. I can't believe it. There has to have been one person. There are people sitting in cars. There are people everywhere around this place. Within the only 10 minutes that I was there, I literally had a group of five guys try to come get me to take as many like um, bong rips as I could uh, like forcefully without my boyfriend present. There was a lot of guys that did approach us. Definitely, I was getting a gut feeling during that that party that something something just didn't feel right with the amount of people that were there and how old some of these people were from the amount of people who did show up. I it was scary. So she felt uncomfortable and wanted to leave the party and left with her boyfriend Ross. Okay, I was still um, I think it's Ross. I don't know if it's Russ, but it sounds like Ross. So she left with her boyfriend. So Mags arrived, left with her boyfriend, which means Kylie was really kind of wandering around there and the only other person she seems to have actually like known because remember she's two years younger than all these seniors and most of the people at the party none of these people seem to really know okay so she was wandering around and she knew Sammy now Sammy says they were like a little pair walking around and only leaving each other's side for a moment that they were also drinking from the same cup the whole night interesting statement you know if it is a case of an OD or something and that type of a cover-up, it's interesting to say, well, we were drinking from the same cup, so it can't be, you know? Anyway, so sometime between 11 and 11.30, Kylie and Sammy walk to her car and some other friends. She said a couple of other friends. Where Kylie then charges her phone and she sends her mom a text to say that she'll be leaving in about 45 minutes. So she told her mom she's going to leave at around quarter past 12, but also asked to extend her curfew to 12.30. And so that would mean if she's leaving at quarter past 12, she still wouldn't make the curfew because it would be at least a 40 minute drive home, 40 to 45. And at nighttime, driving in that area is incredibly dangerous, let alone for a 16 year old who's drunk and possibly high. Very possibly, based on all the activities we know that was going on at the party. What's interesting is that Jagger Westfall, Kylie's ex-boyfriend, was interviewed on Fox News and was portrayed as the boyfriend. So I'm still trying to figure out if he told Fox News he's the boyfriend, you know? Because why would Fox News say this is the boyfriend? <laughs> it feels to me like he's someone who's still very much in love with Kylie and that he would like to still be the boyfriend. But he confirmed with me in a text message that he is, it was actually an Instagram DM, that he is the ex-boyfriend. Because I was confused and I thought, let me just ask him directly, why is Sammy saying he's the ex-boyfriend? Why is Kylie's mother saying he's the ex-boyfriend, but he's saying he's the boyfriend and he texted to say, I am the ex. So he's the ex-boyfriend because that confused people quite a bit and obviously pointed even more red flags at Sammy because she was saying, no, there was no ex-boyfriend there, no boyfriend. She was rocking the single life at 16. Okay, so the thing is that Jagger says he texted Kylie around 10.30 before the party, but she was already at the party from around 10 p.m. So that's in, an interesting little detail. And he said he texted her to complain about his day. Weird, because he's the ex-boyfriend, so maybe they still have a friendship. Understandable, but like, <laughs> complaining about your day, you know, at 10.30 in the evening, while she's out at a party. It feels a little bit like he would have a bit of FOMO, the fear of missing out, right? And try to hook her with some kind of emotional like you know poor me feel sorry for me while you're out having fun type thing we've all been there we've been in those relationships you know what i mean so anyway she, he says he last heard from her at 10 30 p.m she said oh i'm so sorry you're going through that and that's it okay so now after charging the phone in the car between 11 and 11 30 sammy says uh kylie Sammy and a few other friends were in the car drinking alcohol, which was also in the car. I still wonder who brought the alcohol. Uh, not to speculate too far, I just know just from a bit of digging that Mags has got a, a brother, an older brother in his 20s, so I don't know if he maybe helped buy some of the alcohol that was in Kylie's car, because Sammy's saying some of the alcohol was in her car. So they were in the car 
drinking alcohol, a couple of friends, and there Sammy asked Kylie for a ride home because her ride was leaving and she wanted to stay at the party longer. I also wonder if that ride was Mags and her boyfriend, you know, or who. So Sammy's saying, can I please get a ride with you because, you know, my ride's leaving and I would like to stay longer. So that was supposed to be the deal at that point. Now, apparently around 11.30, they got out of the car and went back into the party. And then Sammy says she started looking for another ride home. So that to me is an indication that maybe they took some sort of very powerful drug around 11.30. Because to then be like, ooh, like maybe saying, let's say, oh my word, Kylie's not going to be fine to drive me home. I'm going to go find another ride. Because Kylie arrived in the car. She was driving. So Sammy was like, no, no. I'm going to need to find me a designated driver. Okay. So Sammy, Sammy started looking for a ride home. Right? And they, so that means they went back into the party sometime between 11 and 11.30. Until around midnight or more accurately according to Sammy at 12.25 a.m. So we don't know what happened in those 30 to 30 or 80, 30 to 85 minutes. But I'm thinking if they did some major drugs like they said they were shrooms there, cocaine, MDMA, fentanyl, like all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Sounded like there was a lot of drugs that older dudes brought. Also weird how they say there was free drugs brought in because no drugs are really free unless there's a barter. And what is that barter? That's when things feel sinister. You know, for what favors are you trading the drugs? And if you are trading the drugs for favors, and then the person decides, no, I don't want to do that. What are the consequences? That would be my question. So at 12.25 a.m., Sammy says that's the last time she saw Kylie. She says goodbye. She hugs her. Love you. Good night. And off she goes. So that's like closure, right? I'm out. But then Sammy says at 12.36 a.m., she saw a call. You know, saw a call. So not like I took her call. I just language is interesting but saw a call from Kylie and she spoke to Kylie and Kylie sounded like she was still at the party and then Kylie was asking her hey where are you do you still need a ride now why would Kylie do that just eight minutes later or so wait let's do the math 11 minutes later <laughs> why would she do that uh, if they just had this hug and the closure for the night like I'm out of course they were intoxicated in fact Sammy says inebriated she also said Kylie was in no state to drive Weird to ditch a friend who's in no state to drive. Just leave her at the party with a whole bunch of older guys where they're offering free lines, you know, for what? Okay, but she said that Kylie was having fun, just like a teenager living a life at the party. So there's that. Also, no, I know that Sammy's not responsible for Kylie, but if you are her friend and you're in a car and enjoying the time together and if you seem to be the organizer of this event, speculatively, then one might think you wouldn't ditch a 16-year-old <laughs> who graduated high school two years early, just leave her there with a bunch of guys, right? Anyway, um, the thing is, at 12.36, Sammy gets this call from Kylie, according to her, but law enforcement then comes out to say the last known activity on Kylie's phone is at 12.33 a.m. <laughs> I don't know, if there's no activity after 12.33 and the phone is off, from that point, which is also weird, she charged her phone. So why is her phone suddenly dead? And Sammy had some interesting language too of saying her location was turned off and her, her phone's been off and everything. Like, how do you know her location was turned off? You see, that's like, wow. Again, I'm not uh, really trying to say, I'm not saying that Sammy is responsible for Kylie's disappearance. I just feel like Sammy knows a lot more than what she's saying. I have the last call to her and I was the like last person pretty much like who knows what was happening so then tell us what was happening you know when she left she also said in a recent article that uh, the last person to see Kylie it was around 12 40 a.m. how does she know that how does she know at 12 40 she's very specific with her times especially for someone who claims to have been inebriated now according to Kylie's mom her phone last pinged or her location last showed on her Apple device and her mom got an update that her location was at that campground. Okay, and then law enforcement has been conducting massive searches at that campground. So I wonder what happened at that campground. And whatever happened, 
Where is her car? Where is Kylie? How did someone maneuver that car out of this entire crowd, which must have been a lot of cars, at least a hundred cars parked there if there's 300 people there, at least, right? How was that car maneuvered out? No one saw her leave. No one saw anything. That is very strange. You know, the other thing that I find strange is how there are reports, you know, um, coming out of call-ins and things like that. And people saying, oh, they saw Kylie and they saw her wearing this and they saw that. How did you notice her in such a large crowd in the dark, in the woods? You know, as if she's like a celebrity in the crowd. I mean, it's a whole crowd full of kids, young adults, everyone. How did you specifically notice her? But at least people are coming forward with information because that's what we want, right? I hope more people come forward with information. So that's where we were at for that day. Now, on August 6th, so she went missing, from what we know, shortly after midnight. So 12.30 a.m. on August 6th. Her mom had fallen asleep. She woke up and she realized, whoa, I didn't get a second text from Kylie. Because normally Kylie would say, hey mom, can I like extend my curfew to this time? She says, okay, sure. Just when you come back home, remember to wake me up. Let me know you're safe and all that. But her mom said that normally she would send another text to say, okay, I'm on my way now, I'll be there in however long. But that second text never came. So that to me still means something massive happened at the party. Something bad happened to, at the party, whether that be an abduction, an overdose, her hallucinating and driving into the water, or, or I don't know, an ex-boyfriend arriving, a fight breaking out, I just don't know. There's many possibilities. I know n none of us know if we knew... <laughs> We wouldn't be here today sharing all this information. But the thing is, Kylie was supposed to meet up with her friend, and I believe this is Mags, at 9 in the morning, between 9 and 9.30 at a Starbucks, to go on a camping trip. Now, I still don't know why did you plan a camping trip the next day, knowing you're going to this massive party, especially knowing you're going to be hungover, even just a little bit from all the alcohol, never mind all the drugs. I don't know, man. When I went out a lot in my 20s, I mean, these are teens as well. I went out in my 20s. I didn't go out in my teens. <laughs> in my 20s, when I went out a lot, you don't plan something for the very next morning so early, especially not a camping trip. But that does make me wonder, because Sammy says um, she thought Kylie would maybe stay over. And they say Kylie's laptop was in her car. That makes me feel like maybe she did pack some camping gear. And maybe Sammy did think she was going to stay over, because maybe she'd already packed for this camping trip. And maybe that was part of, you know, Kylie saying, I'm going to this party and the next morning we're going camping to say like, hey, yeah, I was home and then I went camping. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like sometimes stacking events like that, if you want to get up to mischief helps because you could just say, oh, no, sorry, I went to sleep over at Mags's house and then now we're going camping so that it buys you lots of time to do naughty things, right? So maybe there's a small possibility that maybe she did have something packed. I don't know. But, you know, her mom on the Friday was actually for the whole day at hot August nights in Reno. So, so there's that, okay. And meaning she wasn't at home the whole day. So she came home at around 11.30 and that's when she texted Kylie, probably saying like, where are you? Like, what's up? What are you up to? You know, and that's when she found out, oh, okay, she's at this party. Let me know when you're coming home. And she said, oh, she'll leave in 45 minutes. So maybe Kylie thought her mom would be out later or, you know, I don't know. This was kind of a last minute decision to go to this party, it seems like. Because there was an article that said Kylie was initially going to go with her mom and dad to hot August nights and then decided, no, she wants to go to this party. So this party had also been planned for months, apparently, at least a month. But some reports say months and months. Um, and so I wonder how this could be like a last minute thing. And there's a camping trip planned the next day. So it feels a little bit like, of course, as teenagers do, getting up to mischief, planning like, ooh, party, then camp trip. So it's very sad that something has gone so wrong in this that she's been missing now since Saturday. So it's been a week now. Wow. Okay. And no one knows where she is, where her car is, where her phone is. No location pings from her phone whatsoever. The last known one at the Prosser family campground where the party was. Okay, so if we look at Monday, August 8th, on that day, there were lots of air searches and water searches. So we looked at flight radar and all the helicopter activity. 
Uh, we even had our own <laughs> simulator flight over the area so that you guys could see the area. So if you missed out on that, please check that out. And they did extensive water searches and they've been doing that every day since. So that tells me that law enforcement thinks there is a possibility, of course, of her driving into the water. This reservoir, the Prosser Reservoir, is 73 feet deep. Now, some have said that the water is obviously a lot lower right now, and I know that it's like drawn in a lot. There's a lot more shoreline, but I wonder at its deepest part, it's probably still around, you know, 70, 65 to 73 feet deep. And if she had driven into the water, as someone pointed out in one of my live stream chats, the car would have floated for a bit and then sunk. So it is possible that that car could have sunk to the bottom. I just find it strange that with all that equipment that they have, submarines, sonar equipment, uh, aerial searches, everything, that there's nothing been found, you know, that's scary, so on, that's what happened on Monday, then on Tuesday, the 9th of August, there was a press conference, now this was in the woods there, at the area, and what's interesting is, Sammy spoke first with her own mic, we could barely hear it, so if you missed the video where I transcribed everything that she said for you, please check that out. There's a whole playlist that I have for you guys on my channel called Kylie Rodney, if you want to catch up with all the details. Just put it on 1.5 speed <laughs> and you'll catch up in no time. So Sammy spoke with her own mic, okay, and then law enforcement had set up a whole bunch of mics that they were testing, testing, and they spoke. So there was a lot of pat on the back, <laughs> you know, of all the searches they did and everything which I know is important too, to encourage volunteers and law enforcement, everyone to continue their determined searches. But there wasn't much information that came out from that first press conference, right? After law enforcement spoke, Sammy then kind of ran over to those microphones and started talking, and then they cut off the live stream. So that's interesting, right? So then on social media, and wow, Placer, the Placer County Sheriff's Department has done a tremendous job on Twitter. Like, they are so responsive. Um, it's not usual for us to see in the Twitter community for law enforcement to be that responsive, right? It's amazing. So there was a tweet that went out to them to say, why are you letting a teenager run the show, basically? And the response was that it was a public place, a public press conference. We can't stop someone from talking. And then they said social media can be deceiving. So that to me shows that there is actually a little bit more of a division than we think between the teens and law enforcement or between Sammy and the investigation she's running and law enforcement. They can't stop, for instance, these teen to teen secret meetings where Sammy says, come to me and parents drop off your kids at this rec center we've set up, drive far away so that you cannot hear anything, you cannot see anything and then the teens can talk to me. I do understand the importance of teen to teen talks because maybe these teens are really, really scared to, you know, talk to police in case they get in big trouble. Even the police are saying, don't worry, you won't be in trouble. I don't know, as, as, as human beings, we know what it's like when parents are like, it's okay. You know, you won't get in trouble, tell me. And then when you tell them you get in trouble. <laughs> so maybe they're all like, oh no, I'm so going to jail for this type thing because there was a lot of obviously underage drinking. There was um, illicit drug taking and who knows what other activities because apparently there were other illegal activities going on and I wonder what that is. I wonder if it's the little trade-off I was talking about before. I don't know. So on Tuesday, this press conference happened and as I say, the teen to teen meetings maybe have some sense of importance but yet for Sammy and Kylie's ex-boyfriend to both put out their personal cell phone numbers and to say, send me the tips, they need to be filtered through me, I'm working with law enforcement, and then law enforcement says on Twitter, that's untrue. No, there's only one tip line. Do not be contacting these teenagers on their personal numbers and giving them tips. They are not filtering tips for us. There's only one tip line. So what they've set up now is a Linktree link where you can upload videos, photos, and things like that anonymously. And there's one central email and one central tip line that you can contact if you have any information. So I really hope that if anyone was in the area, attended the party, or knows something or saw something, that they will contact the appropriate tip line and not Sammy or Jagger or these other self-organized things, investigations. Now, Sammy has used the word investigation quite a bit, and 
I see that there is speculation that her parents own a private investigative company. It's called Sierra Tahoe Investigations. If her mother's name is Cindy and if her father's name is James, then yeah, her parents own a private investigating firm, which is interesting because then it means that's why she's so <laughs> proactive and kind of playing police officer. You know what I mean? So, hmm, interesting. Very interesting that if that is the case, because maybe that's why she's also saying filter tips through me. Maybe her and her family feel like they could solve the case and speculatively get the reward. Because Sammy is very clear about you have to wear white, okay, and you have to fill in your name on this little paper of mine over here, which looks like an exam pad at the rec center. If you're gonna go out searching, you have to download the All Trails app. We have to monitor where you're searching at all times. And only then, if you find anything, can you claim the reward. If your name's not on here, you can't. I mean, it doesn't really work like that. It usually really doesn't work like that. There's also a GoFundMe setup, which has raised, I think, over now $26,000. That one I'm not too sure about. Um, I'm, I'm not saying anything bad. I'm just very skeptical when it's all these different groups of people organizing things, as well as a concert that's happening today which is called Country for Kylie, and we'll look at that uh, just now when we go through the timeline some more, where they also say donations are welcome to help the family. I hope it's to help the family, not to help the family. I really hope so. So if we look, Tuesday the 9th was that press conference. It looked a little bit, you know, disorganized. Most of us were not all that impressed with it. We were like, what is this even? <laughs> so then they had another press conference on Wednesday the 10th, right? And there they showed us a surveillance, well, an image from surveillance footage of where Kylie was last seen. They also said it's the only solid lead, which was at 6.08 p.m. at a store in Truckee. So that showed Kylie's outfit, which was a black tank top type bodysuit, as well as green Dickies pants and a grommet belt and black vans. In the photo, it almost looks like she's wearing socks, as if she was maybe trying on shoes or maybe she was buying shoes. I don't know. Weird that Sammy says those were not the pants she was wearing because they are, by all other accounts, that's what she was wearing. So they showed us that footage and said it's the only solid lead and they still maintain that's the only solid lead. Which some people have now speculated, what if she never even made it to the party? What if she never made it to the party at all? But then you ask yourself, but what about all the, the phone pings, the messages and all? But yeah, someone else could have had her phone. That's a valid point. Someone else could have actually, something could have happened to her. Someone could have had her phone and been at the party. I don't know. That seems like a less likely option for me, but you just never know. So I'm just putting it out there. Then um, on Thursday, the 11th of August, they had another press conference and they showed us the hoodie. Okay. The hoodie that Kylie had apparently loaned and it's a Lana Del Rey hoodie. And I will put a picture of it up of it now for you so that you can see this hoodie in case you missed it. They say this item is of significance and they believe that Kylie was still in possession of this hoodie when she went missing. So I don't know if that means like, do you know who this hoodie belongs to? Or if they're just showing it in case, you know, people find the hoodie. Then they had a press conference again the next day. I've never in a case seen so many press conferences kind of every single day. And it sort of feels like it's a way to keep a hold of the case seeing as the teens are trying to run the show and run their own investigation, that law enforcement feels like, no, 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 press conference, press conference, so they can keep a handle on where the tips must go to keep, like, visually reminding people, tips come to us, this is the tip line, this is the only link to use, you know, so could be for that. But then they showed us her jewelry, which you can see actually in the picture that I have here next to me, which is, th it's like three necklaces in one, they say she wore it all the time, and it's another item of significance, which is something to look out for. It's another identifier, right? And uh, of course, they've shared that Kylie has lots of piercings. She's got the number 17 tattooed on her rib cage. She's got a scar on her wrist um, from previous surgery, and we can actually see that picture of, it looks like her arm was broken um, before, from the website findkylie.com. Okay. So, so there was a press conference on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and in the most recent one, yeah, they still, they got nothing, 
they're really hoping for teenagers. I think that's the point as well, is for the law enforcement to have these press conferences to really try to appeal to those teens, whoever, or young adults, the people who were at the party. They're the ones that really need to come forward because that's where the information would be coming from. That's the only people who would know what really happened. They described this case, as in law enforcement, as trying to find a needle in a haystack and they don't even know where the haystack is. That is very scary language to me because it means they literally have nothing to go on. Okay, so now we get to Saturday the 13th. So that means that there will be today a Country for Kylie concert where they say love, music, hope. August 13th, 2022 from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Truckee Regional Park. <laughs> we honor the love and support from our amazing teens and community at large that have been on the front lines of this crisis since day one. It's a bit odd to say of this crisis. It's not usually termed that way. Do they not have any adults helping them write this and make these flyers? <laughs> on the front lines of this crisis. I mean, I think law enforcement's been on the front lines, but the teens again here are saying on the front lines of this crisis since day one, Team Kylie Strong, wear white in solidarity, let's bring our girl home. And then they've got a bunch of bands there and they say the event is free, donations welcome to help the family. I don't know how I feel about this concert, but I do think if law enforcement knows, and they know about the concert, I just mean if they in any way involved in setting this type of concert up it might just be to get the teens together to observe them to get them also out of the area that where they want to search you know especially where the rec center might normally be they might just be like oh okay move along over there and have a concert and then they can search everything else on the campgrounds maybe i don't know but that's what's happening today so <laughs> i don't know if there'll be any footage of this this was promoted on sammy smith's personal Instagram account, which is now, yeah, private, that's why I say, so personal inter Instagram account, and she's made it private. It's also promoted on the Find Kylie uh, Rodney Instagram page. It is also on Fox 40 News and other news outlets and on the website. So it is being promoted everywhere. Initially, we thought, whoa, what if this is just promoted like a little secret get together, but it isn't. It's free to attend. And now I wonder how many people are going to attend this event. Oh, my word. The other thing is, wow, since this case broke uh, and we've been covering it so much here on YouTube, a lot of content creators covering this case because it's very interesting. It's such a weird case. Like, I'm trying to wrap my mind around a lot of the details of like, wait, what? Some things just don't make sense. The timeline doesn't add up and there's a lot of, a lot of red flags, right? One of them being Jagger, the ex-boyfriend, right? like inserting himself in the case kind of like Sammy is doing and there's rumor that they once dated Sammy and Jagger that they're also exes I'm not sure about that if anyone can confirm that let me know um, but the thing is that he since deleted that TikTok comment where he said comments should be filtered through him and he deleted Kylie's missing person flyer from his Instagram page which I don't think is a good move because of course he's only a teenager but it's like that looks bad now is really looking bad like you insert yourself in the case to the point where you say felt all tips should be filtered through me before it gets to the sheriff eee, and you're giving out your personal cell phone number for that when you're the ex-boyfriend and by the way he drove through on the saturday and he's staying with kylie's family okay he says he cares about kylie very much i don't doubt that i think he cares about her a lot but just for him to say that he fully believes that she is alive and well, that he or Kate or maybe one other person will find her, bring her home safe. Is that him being delusional and kind of in denial that that her life is at risk, you know, or what, <laughs> you know, but then to delete, to be so defensive about Kylie, because when someone said, um, with all due respect, are you working for the Placer County Sheriff's Department? And he said, with all due respect, do you know Kylie? So he's very defensive when it comes to, yeah, protecting Kylie. I understand that. But also protecting himself and his own ego, right? And his relationship status with her. Which, as I say, he confirmed with me, he's the ex. I definitely feel like that in this current situation that she's safe. I don't know where she is. We don't have anything to go off of at this point. But... I fully believe that she's alive and well, and I fully believe that the two of us, three of us, or other people are going to bring her home safe. So, man, 
I wish he hadn't deleted the missing person's poster because Kylie's um, flyer because it just really looks bad. You insert yourself to that degree. You talk to Fox News. You say that you're the boyfriend and talk about a text that you sent the night that she went missing and then and then you delete everything. It just unfortunately looks bad, you know. So, hmm. Anyway, so there's that. I wonder sometimes if the jealousy may have um, urged him, driven him to want to drive through to that party and intervene in some way. I don't know. And maybe a fight broke out like that. I don't know. That could be really far-fetched, so speculation warning there. I've had a boyfriend do that before, which is why I'm like, huh, you know? Thinking of like, I'm gonna, no way, you're not gonna party your ass off here with all these seniors and everything. I'm coming through! So we are now on the seventh day of Kylie Rodney being missing. So she's 16 years old, she's got blonde hair, hazel eyes, 5 foot 7, she's 115 pounds. She has piercings, uh, tattoo number 17 on her ribs, last seen wearing green dickies pants, a black tank top, numerous piercings, has a nose ring and other jewelry. You can call the anonymous tip line 530-581-6320, option 7, or send an email to the email address, which is linked in the description box. And in the description box is also the Linktree link that Placer County Sheriff's Department has shared. Interestingly now, a couple, okay, so it's a lady and her ex-boyfriend that went for the day apparently on saturday august or sorry on sunday august 7th they went through for the day to hot august nights in reno and they were on their way back home to yuba city where jeanette the missing woman is from and she texted her actual boyfriend so she was with her ex-boyfriend see two ex-boyfriends red flags in both these cases and I hope these cases aren't related, but I'm like, huh, it's very interesting that this lady and her ex-boyfriend went to hot August nights in Reno. Do we ever know that they arrived there or not? They were last seen on August 6th at 11.30 p.m., which means if they actually left on August 6th at 11.30 p.m., I'm just, I just don't know uh, what could have happened to them between going to hot August nights. Did they actually ever get there? Maybe they did. And then coming back and on their way back when uh, Jeanette texted on my way home, I'll be there in 30 minutes and then has since never been seen. Whew. That is that is a scary thought. And I do see there are other missing persons reports in the area. We covered some of them yesterday. Of course, they may be unrelated as well. There's a lot of missing persons in the world, unfortunately. And if you start looking at an area of missing persons, it's, it's pretty scary to think of how many people go missing in 2022. Never mind ever. I just mean today with all this technology, with all the cameras, with everything, people just vanish. So that is where we're at as a good overview in the Kylie Rodney case. We don't know what happened to her at that party. We don't know where she is, where her car is, where her phone is, laptop, anything. We know nothing. Law enforcement also knows nothing at this point. They say. They say they've got no actual solid leads. The only lead they have is the surveillance image, the surveillance footage, which they showed us an image of. There's one picture from the party that Sammy shared and one small video, which is pretty scary to see a group of guys and the one looks like he's screaming, which we've looked at as well. They've shown us the hoodie that they believe she loaned on the night. And they've shown us the jewelry that she wore all the time. And that we should be keeping um, a lookout for. They've also shared recent photos of her, or more recent photos of her car. Which was actually from winter. So there's that as well to look out for. And the couple I just mentioned, they were in a blue ford van with stolen license plate numbers so that's a red flag to me as well you know so i don't know i don't know what to think at this point and i i don't really want to speculate i know we're all thinking things i just want to say that for me the options are very likely that this was an overdose um, at the party and someone's trying to cover this up and maybe her car is in a garage somewhere which leads me to my second theory, which would be an abduction, because this party was absolute predator paradise. So Sammy was saying her and Kylie and, you know, everyone was kind of, they wander off into the woods to pop a squat, to pee. 
to relieve themselves, you know, which if you're drinking that much and taking drugs that much, you might go quite frequently. So imagine a girl by herself, especially after Sammy left and Mags had left as well, wandering into the woods to take off her pants and she was wearing a bodysuit. So not to be graphic, but I wonder if it like unclips or what, but like no matter what you're doing, it's very a very vulnerable position to be in to pop a squat and be peeing in the woods somewhere away from the party. That is that is the most vulnerable situation I can imagine for a young girl, sixteen year old, young blonde, beautiful girl who's very vulnerable already because she's drunk and high allegedly. Wow, that is scary. So if there's a predator lurking anywhere near, or is just even watching and sees, okay, this is her pattern. She goes there to go to the bathroom in the woods. Yeah, okay great place to intercept right so an OD an abduction or maybe even a hallucination and drunk driving as they say or high driving and driving into the water it's as easy to take a left if you were supposed to take a right especially in that state does she drive into the water does she crash into a ravine because that's possible on her drive home we had an extensive look at the the road we put the little google man down we flew over the area uh, with a flight simulator and it's just like those roads are really scary so to think that of course she could have tried to drive home easily swerved and crashed somewhere and as we've seen with heavy d sparks some of the vehicles they've rescued some cars get stuck in ravines and things where people are looking for people who just like where they were driving from here to here and it might take a week to find that vehicle or it might take months sometimes it takes years i hope that's not the case for kylie i hope they find her very very soon i hope that she is still alive and well as sammy says her gut feel is as jagger says he fully believes she is i really hope so this case feels really scary though for kylie 16 years old very smart girl but no matter how smart you are we are, we can all do dumb things and make mistakes right and i think yeah if she had gone to this party driving there alone and deciding to drive back at night without asking for help you know i'm just i'm not victim blaming i'm saying like if it's such a scary party yeah get out of there so that's it i try to learn lessons from all these cases right I would just say if you go to a party and you feel like whoa this is making me so uncomfortable this is very hectic do your best to get out of there as soon as possible because what i found i've done and it's gotten me in some very tricky situations is that you almost feel like well i'm resilient i can overcome this it's okay let's get in let's blend in let's figure this out but you don't have to do that because there's no prize to win for that type of courage or bravery or trying to prove that you know you know peer pressure there's there's no prize when you get involved in a peer pressure situation if you don't feel comfortable get out of there no matter what situation you're in and no matter what your age is if you go to any barbecue party whatever it is now and you get there and you're like eh, something feels off i don't know about this get out of there listen to your gut instinct right and be mindful of those red flags i mean this party sounded completely out of control and just the one picture we've seen with all those glass bottles just strewn over the ground it just it looks chaotic and then they were having these friendly fights but apparently people coming from all different areas the boys would fight it, it sounds a lot like gang activity this really sounds to me like teenage gangs that's what this meetup sounds like to me and why it's so secret secret and why there's not that many photos or videos although law enforcement might have many photos and videos and sammy says they have hundreds of photos and videos i really hope they do I really hope they do. I don't know why none of it can be released, but I know it's an active investigation, so an active missing persons case with no Amber Alert. But um, yes, I just wonder if they were all using, you know, the Be Real app and not really sharing it on any other social media apps. If there were like rules for this party, which would make sense if it's kind of like gang mentality, that would make sense to me. And it's like fighting between the boys and maybe that's part of the illegal activities going on. Cockfighting. But like literally <laughs> no rooster is involved you know anyway um i hope that more information will come out i will obviously keep you guys posted please check out uh the playlist that i made for you which i've linked below so that you can catch up on all the details because this is just an overview of what we've covered this week and i'm sure there'll be more information coming soon maybe another press conference maybe they're going to have one every day for all we know 
Uh, if there is, of course, I'll be going live. So make sure that you subscribe and set the bell to all. That is for you. That is not a favor for me. If you subscribe and set the bell to all, you'll know when I'm going live because you should then get a notification or when I do an upload. And if you want to help me out, hit the thumbs up and leave a comment below and share this video. Of course, sharing helps Kylie out a whole lot too because the more that we get this case into the media spotlight and keep it there, that would be the goal, I think, of, of content creators like okay let's make sure that this case stays active um, in the media so that if anyone who hasn't heard about this case yet of which some locals might not even have if they come across it, they're like wait a minute i saw that girl she was here and here and here that would really be helpful and hopefully they call the appropriate tip line or email them or upload whatever they've got to the link that i put below for you guys which is from placer county sheriff's department okay so that's it for now Stay safe, look after yourself, trust your gut instinct, be mindful of those red flags, and I'll see you again very soon. Thank you for watching.